Well, this is the uh, first time we are actually going to be putting in our code and learning how to use R as a calculator. There are several different uh, operators that can be used. The ones you're used to are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. But in this section, we're even going to look at things like the modulo operator and that type of thing. We are in our studio right now. And what I've done here is I have made this upper left window very, very small because we won't be using much of that. And in addition, I'm going to slide this slightly to the right because we'll only be making use of this upper right window here. Most of the action will be down here in the lower left. So if you look at the beginning when you enter either R or R Studio, it will tell you right here which version it is. And this is version 3.4.2 and this was downloaded in uh, 2017 and usually there is some type of name that is uh, um, given to it and they're kind of goofy names this one happens to be short summer but there are things like world famous astronaut or frisbee sailing or something like this and uh, tells you what platform it is being used on and um, a bunch of disclaimers and then you're ready to go down at the bottom here, where I'm pointing right here, you can see there is a greater than symbol, and that is the prompt. The prompt says that R or R Studio is waiting for a command from you. Now that command is, uh, is going to be something that you type out, and this will feel very much like the 1970s in that um, you don't have a GUI that works here. The uh, graphical user interface uh, would not apply to R because there are just too many different commands that are out there. So we're going to start in with R as a calculator and I will go ahead and put in a command here. Let's go with 2 plus 7 times 4. Now the first thing you notice right away is I'm putting spaces between all the operators and that's for readability. And we get 30 in this case and what's going on here is it's doing the multiply first and then the addition. So 7 times 4 is 28. It adds 2 and it, it, it's 30 will be the result. We'll discuss the uh, 1 that's in the brackets a little bit later, but we'll ignore it for now. I could have typed this as 2 plus 7 times 4, and I still would have gotten 30. So the spaces are not necessary, but I encourage you to get into the habit of putting spaces in there for readability, and that's generally the accepted practice in computer science. It just makes your code a lot more readable. Now there is something known as PEMDIS, and I will write that right here. And that's something you might have heard from in uh, Algebra 1. And those letters stand for parentheses, exponentiation, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. This is the order or the precedence in which R will perform your operations. So when we had 2 plus 7 times 4, the first thing it did is it saw that multiply and it says the multiply has a higher priority than addition, so it did the multiply first and then it added. Depending on where you went to school, you might have also heard of this PEMDAS as please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, and that's another way of remembering it. Now, this is just some of the um, precedents. We're going to learn a lot more. There's uh, much higher levels of things, but this will do for um, this first uh, introduction here. If you go back to 2 plus 7 times 4 and say, wait a minute, what I'd like to do is I'd like to add 2 and 7 first and then multiply by 4, what you can do is you can use parentheses, and this is something that happens in our studio, but not in our. When I hit the left parenthesis, it automatically gave me a right parenthesis. This might be welcome, this might be unwelcome, but in, anyhow, in any case, I can type in 2 plus 7, and then what I do is I hit the right arrow, and the right arrow takes me beyond those parentheses, and then I can multiply by 4. Now 2 and 7 are going to get added together first. That gives you 9, and 9 times 4 when you hit the return key it gives you 36. In addition 
to addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, you can also do exponentiation. So let's try 10 raised to the, and that's this caro, which, caret, which is shift, uh, shift 6. Let's raise that to the third power, and in that case, you get 1,000. Now, if you ever have a very long line and you want to continue it, here's what happens. Let's say you say 2 plus 7 times 4 divided by 3 minus, and then you hit the uh, return key. It will come back here and give you what's known as the continuation prompt, and that in this case is a plus. So now you just continue with your command, minus 6 um, plus 4 divided by 17, and finally when you hit uh, return, it will do that calculation and return the result as a floating point. Now, here is something that might come up, and that is if you take seven ones, it's a big number, that's going to be uh, a little over a million, and I multiply it by seven more ones. Well, what happened here is that is too big of a number for R to store in its default setting, and it gave you 1.234 times 10 to the 12th power. Now, the reason for it won't display it as a, uh, the exact product is that there are not enough digits present in R in its default setting for you to be able to see that. So one thing you can do here is you can go to Options, and you can set the digits, instead of being the default 7, to say, uh, let's go with 15 digits. Now if you go back and redo that calculation, by the way, rather than typing it in, I'm just going to hit the up arrow twice. First time gives me the previous command, and then the next time I hit the up arrow, it gives me a, the command prior to that. And when you hit return, you can see now, instead of giving you this in scientific notation, it can hold all 15 digits, and there is the number as an exact integer. There is a built-in constant, lowercase p, lowercase i, and that gives you pi. And there is pi to 15 digits. Now, if you want more digits on pi, you can, again, I'm up arrowing here, back to the Options command. You can go back to Options and say, I want, say, 22 digits. And then if you go back and take a look at pi, there it is to 22 digits. So that can be done if you want more accuracy. Here is another one that you've got to kind of look out for. You have 6.0221 for E23. You can enter numbers in scientific notation, and in this particular case, what I'm entering in is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power. Now, what you're seeing right now can come as a shock, because notice I put in 6.02214, but yet it returns 6.02213999999. So you have to keep in mind that unlike computer algebra systems like Maple or Mathematica, which store um, things exactly, here they're being stored as a floating point, and sometimes you're going to have round-off problems. And in this particular case, you ran into a round-off problem. Here's still another one. 1 divided by 18 raised to the seventh power. Well, in this particular case, 18 to the seventh power is a big number, so you have 1 divided by a very big number, and that's going to be a very small number. And this time it will return it in scientific notation, and this time you get 1.63 times 10 to the minus ninth power. The last thing that we're going to do here in this section, which is using R as a calculator, is we're going to do some extreme calculations. And again, the pound sign here is the uh, comment. So it will not process what I'm typing here. But we're going to look at some 
extreme calculations and see how R handles these. So I'm going to start out by taking 1 divided by 0. You know that you can't divide by 0, but what will R do with that? And it will put that out as inf, kind of short for infinity. Here is another one. If I take infinity minus infinity, it'll give you NAN. Now that NAN is short for not a number. Here's another one you might want to look at. 0 divided by 0. And that one also is returned as uh, not a number. Still another example of something that R should have problems with is what happens if we decide to raise negative 9 to the 1 half power. Well, raising a number to the 1 half power is the same as taking the square root of that number. So in this case, we're taking the square root of a negative 9, and that should cause some problems, and it does. So in that case, it also returns not a number. There are two more operators that will finish off this um, section, and that is the integer divide and the modulo function. And here is an example. 37 and the percent sign slash percent sign is the integer divide. And this says, when I take 37 and I divide it by 5, and I want to know only the integer part of the result, it will come back and say that divides to 7. And it completely ignores the remainder. Now the other one that you have is the modulo function. And if you take 37 modulo 5, what it will do is again it will divide 37 by 5. But in this case, it will tell you what the remainder is. And for that operation, the remainder is 2. And this completes the first topic that we're doing, which is R as a calculator. This is chapter 2 in the textbook.